Hi students, today we're going to be talking about something called the dime dropper phrase, which is just a fun way to remember something that in grammar is referred to as the adjective clause. And remember, an adjective is a word that describes a noun, like my sweatshirt is blue, so blue is an adjective. Um, and then a clause is just a group of words that has a verb in it, but it's not normally a complete sentence. So the dime dropper phrase. First, let's talk about our learning objective. So here's your goal for today. Today I will be able to use adjective clauses also known as the dime dropper phrase, in order to turn short, choppy sentences into more fluent and complete sentences or complex sentences. So let's talk about that phrase. Why do we call it dropping a dime? Well, in the past, people used to have to drop a dime in those public telephones. You can see the picture of one right here. So they used to have to pay a pay a dime to make a phone call in a public telephone. So the phrase to drop a dime eventually was used to describe people who would drop a dime and then call the police to report on someone, to report someone's activity. So they'd go to the public telephone on the corner, drop in a dime, and they'd be like, hey, so-and-so is doing something bad, you better get here quick. So the phrase to drop a dime became slang for being like a tattletale or betraying someone by ratting, ratting them out, or even just gossiping about someone by giving information about someone. So in language arts, we're going to use this phrase to describe how we would use what, what's formally called an adjective clause to drop more information in a sentence about, about people or things in that sentence. So let's talk a little bit about relative pronouns. So first, a pronoun. Um, a pronoun is a word that becomes a substitute for another noun. So instead of Mrs. Han, you might say she or her. She likes... I don't know, grilled cheese sandwiches. I do, they're great. So these are words like he, him, they, you, us, her, me. These are pronouns. Now, relative pronouns are a specific type of pronoun. So relative pronouns are the types of words that begin dime dropper phrases that add more information in a sentence. They also join parts of a sentence together. So these are the relative pronouns, who, whose, whom, where, when, that, and which. That's it, those are all the relative pronouns. So I'm not going to read this entire slide, but I want to give you a couple examples of how relative pronouns work. So they take the place of other nouns or pronouns. They're called relative pronouns because they always relate back to something or someone else. So they're used to join two sentences about the same person or thing. So for example, who, I could use the word who to replace I, she, he, we, and they. So if I had two sentences, like this is a man, this man broke a window. Instead, I could combine those sentences by saying, this is the man who broke the window. Instead of this is the man he broke the window, I could just replace he with who and put them together. Here's another one, whose shows like possession or relationship. So here's a sentence, she knew the family whose house we bought. That would be another example. Or whom, whom would replace a, a pronoun like me, him, her, us, and them. So they have found the lady whom they want to interview. So those are examples here. Now let's break it down a little bit more simply for you, but just remember that they join two short sentences together to become one, and relative pronouns are also called relative because they always relate back to something else or someone else. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this little chart. On the left-hand side, you can replace these words with these words right here, these relative pronouns. So for example, if I have two sentences and one of them uses he, she, or they, I can replace the word he with who instead and join the sentences together. If a sentence uses his, hers, theirs, or its, I could use the word whose, and I could put those two sentences together. So here's an example. Here's how you can combine two short sentences using the dime dropper phrase. So the second phrase is my extra information, the information I wanna drop in my sentence. My first sentence is my ESL teacher likes to ride his mountain bike. Now he is a pronoun that replaces my ESL teacher. So I wanna replace he with my relative pronoun to join the two sentences together and I want this to be the dime dropper phrase. So my ESL teacher likes to ride his mountain bike. He came to Germany in 1986. Those don't need to be two separate sentences. I can combine them into one more complex sentence. Like this, my ESL teacher, comma, who, notice I switched he with who, who came to Germany in 1986, comma, likes to ride his mountain bike. Now I have a more complex, more fluid sentence that's a little bit more interesting than two short choppy sentences. Here is another example. This time I'm going to replace it, this, these, or those with either the word that or the word which. So the first sentence is my original sentence. The second sentence is going to turn into my dime dropper phrase. Here we go. The 2020 presidential election is already shaping up to be a wild ride. 
It will offer many unexpected twists and turns before election day. I want to join these into one complex, bigger sentence. So I'm going to look here. It, I can either replace with that or which. I'm going to choose which. So let's look at my combined sentence where I've turned this sentence into a dime, dime dropper phrase where I dropped in more info. The 2020 presidential election, comma, which will offer many unexpected twists and turns before election day, comma, is already shaping up to be a wild ride. Notice I've created a more interesting, complex, and longer sentence instead of two short, choppy sentences. All right. Now, one thing that's important to remember is when you're combining sentences, make sure the dime dropper face is next to the noun it describes or else the sentence is going to be confusing. So here are my two sentences. A strange man met John at the door. John opened it slowly. Now, if I look back here, I know that I need to replace the word it with that or which. So my two sentences again are a strange man met John at the door. John opened it slowly. Now it refers to the door, right? It doesn't refer to the strange man. So here's a confusing sentence where someone would take the dime dropper phrase and put it in the wrong place. John was met at the door by a strange man, which he opened slowly. Well, here the dime dropper phrase sounds like he's opening the strange man slowly, which makes no sense. So this phrase is describing the door. I need to put it next to the door so the sentence is clear and not confusing. So here's a clear sentence. A strange man met John at the door, which he opened slowly. Here, which he opened slowly is right next to the word it describes door, and that's less confusing. All right, so you need to get out your copy of the assignment titled Practice It the dime dropper phrase, and we're gonna go ahead and look at the parts of this assignment together. So the instructions at the top, there's a few parts. The first part is where you're gonna combine two sentences just like we practiced in the lesson. So you're gonna make your own dime droppers. So for example, you'll get two sentences like this right here. In the end, I just gave the car to my dad. He loves a good bargain. Instead of those two sentences, I'm gonna switch he out with the word who, right? Here are our um, relative pronouns at the top. So instead I might write, in the end, I just gave the card to my dad who loves a good bargain. That's one nice long sentence. All right, now you don't, I'm gonna let you read the instructions on your own as a review, but I'm just gonna quickly give you an example of what you're gonna do in part one, part two, and part three. So for part one, question one is these two sentences, 1.1 and 1.2. Your job is to combine them into one sentence. So for example, the Titanic sailed from Southampton on the afternoon of April 10th, 1912. It was a large ocean cruise liner. So if I'm like, well, what do I replace it with? Look over here, he, she, they, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's right here. I'm going to replace it with either that or which. So when you rewrite your sentence, you need to replace it with that or which, and then you need to think about where does this need to go? It needs to go next to the word it's describing. What's a large ocean cruise liner? The Titanic. So this phrase needs to be next to the word Titanic when you rewrite the sentences combined into two. All right, and you're going to either do this on your own or you're going to do this in class with your teacher. So you're going to do that for sentence two, three, and sentence four. Now for sentence four, I've given you three sentences to combine, but I've given you some hints here that will help you figure out how to put all three choppy short sentences into one longer complex sentence. Part two, um, you're doing the same thing, but I've given you one base sentence and you're going to replace it with each of these dime droppers. So basically you get, I've given you four dime droppers and you have to write four different sentences with a different dime dropper in each, each one. So the students walked into the classroom. Your first dime dropper is right here. Example, they were carrying backpacks. So I need to think about this. Do I put they were carrying backpacks next to classroom or next to students? Well, the they, is students, right? What do I replace they with? Well, if I go up here, here are my pronoun replacements. He, she, or they, I replace with who. So I'm gonna replace they with who. And I know that it needs to be next to students, not next to classrooms. You wouldn't say the students walked into the classroom who were carrying backpacks, that makes no sense. So right here, here is how you would rewrite the sentence with a dime dropper. So these two sentences to go together. The students, comma, who were carrying backpacks, comma, walked into the classroom. So you're gonna combine sentence one with letter B and then do it right here. Then you're gonna combine sentence one with the dime dropper letter C and put it right here and so forth. So you're gonna do that here and in this box. So basically each time I've given you four different dime droppers and you rewrite a new version of the sentence with each new dime dropper, make sure you put it next to the underlined word it describes. Okay, finally, part three. This is the most challenging part. This is called a sentence scramble, a scrambled sentence. You have to unscramble it. So I've given you a highlighted part. 
these are all the parts of the sentence. So there's a there are actually a couple dime droppers in each sentence, and you have to put it in order where it makes sense. Now, the yellow part is what needs to go first. So over here, I know that my sentence needs to start with in the ghetto. Now, what would go next? In the ghetto is something to camouflage. Nope, that doesn't make sense. In the ghetto and teenage machismo. Nope, that doesn't make sense. In the ghetto, where athletes and gang members gain the most attention in the school hallways. Ooh, that might work. So that might be my next part, where athletes and gang members, blah, 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 blah. And I can't spell and talk at the same time. So what you have to do is read through it and try to figure out how to unscramble it. Where do all the different dime droppers go in a way that the sentence will make sense? All right. And you have two of those unscrambled sentences that you need to unscramble. All right. Good luck as you work on this assignment um, and let your language arts teacher know if you have any questions.